Hey, welcome back to Better Done Yourself. Today on Better Done Yourself, I want to grow some sprouts. I've been hankering for some sprouts. It's, well, it's the middle of the winter here, we're in North America, and it's pouring down rain, and there's no chance of starting a garden today. Um, I, I really want, I want some fresh vegetables. I want that crunch. I want, I want all those phytonutrients. I want, you know, some delicious fresh veg, and, well, looked in my cabinet and I didn't find any. Looked in the fridge and I found some stuff from last week that I bought at the supermarket. It wasn't particularly crunchy. So, but sprouts, sprouts are really the way to go. Sprouts can, I think, get you through this, this horrible winter. Um, you can see how dark it is outside. Never mind the noise from the rain. Hopefully you can hear my voice. But I want to talk about sprouts. Sprouts are awesome. I actually started some sprouts uh, four days ago and they're super simple to make. You literally take some seeds, take some beans, take... I mean, I looked through my cabinet and I found all kinds of things. I found the things I usually sprout, mung beans. You heard bean sprouts? Or um, broccoli. Broccoli is, is an awesome thing. If you can get a hold of some broccoli seeds, maybe hit one of the links below and pick up some broccoli seeds on Amazon. These are awesome. They're amazing health benefits just locked up in these little seeds. And they're super easy to sprout. I'll show you how. Other things to sprout, maybe you've got some sorghum, maybe you like to have a little side of sorghum um, when you are, are, are cooking. Sprout these, delicious. Um, maybe more popular grain items, barley. Um, uh, wheatgrass uh, makes great sprouts. You know, a lot of times you see it just kind of growing straight up in the trays, but you can throw it in a jar and grow it. Um, some things that won't sprout, anything that's pearled, uh, this is pearled barley. When they pearl something, it, they literally take the jacket off. They take the seed coat off. Um, for some health benefits, a lot of people say there's lectins in the seed coats. So eating pearled foods is a little bit more nutritious for you than eating the food with, with the, the lectins still involved. But that's another show. Um, pearled barley, not recommended. Um, just dig through your cabinet. You probably have something to sprout. Whole millet, I bet you this would sprout. Go, if you are, are stuck and you end up at the supermarket, bag of lentils. I don't know, what was it, 69 cents for a bag of, um, of green lentils? These will sprout. Or you can buy um, things that are specifically for sprouting. A word of caution, when you're buying seeds specifically for sprouting, not at the grocery store that you're going to eat anyway, but if you just go out and buy seeds, look for organic seeds, number one, so there's no pesticides on them and look for seeds specifically for sprouting. A lot of times you'll buy seeds for feed, for other purposes, and they'll be irradiated. They'll be um, basically blasted with radiation so they won't sprout. So look for organic sprouting seeds, beans, whatever you like. But so just to give you some ideas, I started some, some sprouts. Oh, I dated them here. I always label and date whenever I do my sprouts. But here's some broccoli that I started. Um, my, my lentil beans are doing great. I've got probably little half inch, three quarter inch roots on them. What else have I got going here? Alfalfa. Some people complain that sprouts are really bitter. And if you are kind of a foodie and you know about real nutritious foods, those bitter foods are full of vitamins. It's all those micronutrients that are making things like kale and, and you know, uh, um, beet tops so that are really bitter. They're full of vitamins. So are sprouts. The nice thing about alfalfa sprouts are they're still just as nutritious, but they're not as bitter. So if you don't like bitter foods, maybe look for some sprouts and that might give you a better idea of, how to, of uh, something to sprout. And then my little, uh, my little mung beans here are doing pretty well. I guess we've got maybe a quarter inch tail, but these are ready to eat. These, these are ready to go. We can, we can enjoy these. All right, so enough talk. I know what you're saying, you're saying, get me sprouting, John, what do I need? What do I gotta, what do I gotta buy? I don't wanna buy anything, I just wanna make some sprouts. Raid your cabinet, look and see if some seeds you have. Find a jar, find a little piece of, uh, this little piece of cheesecloth, and a rubber band. Let's sprout some sorghum just for fun. I usually do just kind of cover the bottom of the jar. Um, I've got about a quarter of an inch of seeds in there. And then you're going to want to soak the seeds. We're going to soak them overnight like this. Then in the morning, you're going to put your top on. You know, you can use your canning ring. You can 
We'll just use a rubber band for simplicity's sake. Go ahead and drain them out. Once you've got your sprouts drained, find a little bowl and just rest your, uh, your, your, your sprouting jar in the bowl like this. That'll allow the water that you didn't drain out just to, to drain out. All right, let me recap. So basically we're gonna take some seeds, beans, lentils, whatever you like, put them in the bottom of a jar, soak them in water overnight, or at least 12 hours, kind of wakes up the seeds. We're gonna put a little kind of a screen cap or something over top and drain them. Give them a little rinse real quick, get them well drained, and then put them upside down or kind of tilt it into a bowl and let them sit like that. Put them some, I leave mine out on the counter. A lot of people put them in the dark. They think that, you know, the seeds do better in the dark because they're used to being underground. You can play with that if you want. I like to keep mine right here on the counter right next to the sink because I see them. Because you really want to remember to rinse them. When I get up in the morning and I'm, you know, making breakfast or getting ready for work, I see my, my sprouts and each jar, fill it up with water, give it a little shake, pour it out. At night when I come home and I'm cooking supper, I see my sprouts sitting by the sink. Each jar, fill it up with water, give them a little shake, dump them out, let them drain. And then I leave them sitting, you saw how I had them all sitting here on my dish rack. And what you're doing is you're preventing mold from growing, you're preventing anything from kind of getting a foothold in there. You know, you leave something sitting on the counter that's sort of wet like that, it's gonna get moldy. If you rinse it twice a day, it won't mold. It'll keep refreshing it, it'll re-moisten the, the sprouts and, and keep them invigorated. You can't leave them sitting in water because roots, believe it or not, need air to grow. The sprouts that we're growing are the little roots of the little seeds. So we, we want to make sure that there's plenty of air to go around for these, li these little seed tails. And then whenever you're ready, I mean, you can literally eat them right after you, you soak them overnight. <laughs> that, that just, when they begin to sprout, when they begin to realize, oh wait, there's water here, I'm going to sprout, I'm going to make a new plant. They burst into action and the water basically takes away all the the lectins and, and the phytic acid and all those kind of built-in plant protections that the, the plant puts into its seeds that prevent you from digesting those nutrients in those seeds. So by soaking overnight at least or sprouting and waiting a couple of days with rinsing every day, you're actually unlocking a huge storeroom of, of, of nutrients that that plant set aside for its future generation. So we're kind of short-circuiting that whole thing of trying to grow a whole new plant and growing all new vegetables. Just grow the little, the little uh, microgreens, if you will, of these sprouts and they're super nutritious. A couple little things that I found, if you, if you, you know, this, it works pretty well, but then you have to remember to wash the little clogs. A lot of places you can buy, I've even, I bought these in the supermarket, believe it or not, is little sprout caps. They fit, they're just the right size for, um, for canning jars. And they let they give nice airflow. Um, this may or may not allow a lot of airflow, so it'll work, but maybe not the best way. This gives you some nice airflow. These come in, you know, various sizes. This one I'm gonna have a little trouble with. This one I think is for big beans. I put my little mung beans in there, and occasionally I get the uh, beans coming through the screen. So choose choose wisely. A great product that I got from Mason Tops is their Sprout Tops. These are super, they're seed stuck to them, but they've got this kind of faceted um, top so you can get a good grip on it and get it off of there. But it's got this little kind of pore area here. So when you're filling, that you can kind of direct the, the stream of the tap into this little hole and the, uh, the water will go right into the jar. And then you can go ahead and drain it um, through all the little the little micro perforations here and these little fins you don't need to leave it on, resting on its side where it might kind of pull up some water here this way you've got some nice airflow right in, underneath there those little fins hold it just you know off the counter or maybe you've got it in your bowl and you don't have it sitting in water remember what we want to do is keep these things constantly rinse twice a day, but then never have any water that they're sitting in. I don't want my seeds sitting in water because they'll rot, they'll mildew, they'll probably ferment. But um, as we know, um, things that are kind of moist in the counter will go south. So what do you do with these? What do you do with your sprouts? You've got, you know, a pint of, of, of alfalfa sprouts. Just eat them. I mean, you literally, nice crunch. 
delicious flavor. Tastes like springtime. Don't taste like this miserable weather we're having. And these are awesome. You can have these, mix these together in a salad. Yeah, I've probably got enough different kinds I can have a strictly a sprout salad. Put them on, um, on tacos, on, on, on hamburgers, on, in a sandwich. You could make a sandwich of just a little bit of bread, some uh, olive oil, avocado, some sprouts, and, uh, and some more toast, and uh, that'd be awesome right there. But I really, I highly recommend trying some sprouts. Try, uh, order, hit the links down below, grab a, grab a, a mason top, sprout top, and um, play with that. Maybe you can find some at the supermarket. Maybe you want to cheap out on me and just use a, a piece of cloth and a rubber band on a, on a drinking glass and don't buy anything at all. It's completely up to you guys. Rummage through your cabinets. Find some lentils or find some th something that you thought was going to be a delicious uh, side dish. Hell, sprout it just for fun. See what happens. All right, one final way. Maybe you can't find a jar. Maybe you don't have any glass in your house. How about a bowl and a strainer and a colander? Just uh, pick your favorite seeds. I've got some of my sorghum here into the bottom of the colander. And remember, it doesn't matter how you do this as long as you follow a couple simple steps. Rinse your seeds and soak them overnight. So here, I'll just give these a, uh, a quick rinse, drain them, and then I'm gonna just leave them sitting in a bowl of water overnight. Make sure they're all underneath. And here, so here's my, uh, my initial overnight soak. Tomorrow morning, I'll go ahead and strain the water off and put them back in the bowl. Remember, we don't want them sitting in water. This accomplishes that. They continue to drain. And then we'll take a dish towel and moisten it. Not wet, just wrung out. And cover this whole lot with the towel. I mean, there's a lot of air in the bowl. It's got, it's got all the air that it needs. And the, this wet towel will keep the whole thing damp. So now again, twice a day, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna make sure my towel's still good and damp. Take my little uh, sprout colony here. Give it a quick rinse, put it back in the bowl, let it drain, put my wet towel on top, and another 12 hours. In four or five days, I'm gonna have some real nice sprouted sorghum to enjoy on my uh, salad. Super duper. You heard me ma mention lectins? Uh, something that, uh, if you do a, a search here on, on YouTube or just a Google search, you'll see um, lectins. Dr. Stephen Gundry comes up. Interesting man. Has, has of course, his own line of supplements and great powders and, and vitamins and things you can take. But it has an interesting point about plants. I mentioned the, you know, the lectins and, and the, the phytic acid. That plants, everyone says, you know, eat your vegetables. And now here I am telling you to eat seeds of vegetables or beans and legumes and things like that. If you're going to do this on a regular basis, one thing Stephen Gundry will tell you is don't eat the seed jackets. These are full of toxins. These are, are poisonous. Be the plants put them there. Some people say, oh, well, just go ahead and soak them overnight. They'll be fine. It, it soaks all the lectins out. Or cook them. When you make red kidney beans, red kidney beans are toxic if in the raw state. You can probably kill somebody if you feed somebody a half a dozen red kidney beans. Um, if you know about the um, ricin. Ricin is, is specifically a poison that's made out of um, bean hulls. So a lot of people, when they make their, their sprouts, they rinse. We're gonna, we can real quickly rinse these guys. And now that they've sprouted, it's been a couple days, I see all the, the seed coats are loose in the jacket. Super simple to get them out, let me show you. So if you decide you wanna get those seed coats off your sprouts, you can see a bunch are right in the lid, that was easy. Just dump your sprouts into a big bowl with lots of water. Get the ones that stick to the inside of the jar. And if you run enough water on them, the seed coats will literally separate from the, from the little sprouts and you can pour them off. And you can see if we, the seed coats float and we can So just give them a little bit of agitation here. 
and then you can literally just pour them off. You'll lose a couple of sprouts in the process, but if you don't like the taste of those seed coats or you are a big uh, Stephen Gundry fan and you want to get those seed coats out of there, I see there's a bunch that have sunk to the bottom, so maybe just go ahead and harvest your sprouts this way. And you can see they're fairly seed coat free, but I think if we look in the bottom of the bowl here, there's just too many sprouts. There is literally a big pile of either unsprouted seeds and also um, seed coats down there. So pour off what you can, scoop the rest out of here, and um, throw these right on your sandwich. And I think you will really be happy with your sprouts. And that's sprouts. Super easy to do. Just kind of got to remember twice a day to rinse them. But otherwise, if you have any questions, leave me a comment down below. Hit the links down below if you want. I've got a nice selection of um, these, these seeds that I like to sprout that you can pick up on Amazon. Or just run to the supermarket. Either way, thanks for watching, you guys. I'll see you next week.